TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, you see it. The warning screen. You never know what's going to happen in these long documentaries. So put that, man. Don't forget we are on Twitch. Twitch.com is where you can go. Username's at the bottom of the screen. You can catch a live, previous lives. Or be ready for future lives. Just remember, there is stuff that we only watch on Patreon. I mean, on on here. So go lock on on uh, Twitch. We do have Patreon as well. We started Gavin and Stacy. Good show. I like the first episode. Not gonna lie, they got me hooked by the pilot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, this is the sickening M of Michael Brierly. This is 2024, five months ago. Wow. Okay, talk to me then. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Talk to me. Got my letters vote. Oh, please. Oh, please. It's pretty investors. Murder is one of the most savage crimes possible. The injuries are some of the most brutal injuries I have ever come across in my service as a police officer. There is 164 impact points on Michael's body. And for detectives across the UK, investigating such killings are always a challenge. Are you dead? No comment for the third time. Finding evidence that proves beyond reasonable doubt a suspect is guilty is sometimes no easy task. That's not good. You're meant to be a detective. I've been with Lancashire Constabulary now for 21 years, predominantly as a detective. Lancashire's a lovely place to be, lots of things going on. Like any area, unfortunately, there is instances and isolated instances where crime occurs. I've always had a passion to be a police officer, um, mainly because I think I get satisfaction, reward from helping people. Working in the homicide team and the force measure investigation team enables me to do that to people at the most uh, difficult periods of their life. Chase your dreams, man. Whatever your dreams may be, if that's the reasoning behind it, salute, man. This a hospital? What is this? A police with emergency. That's a police station? This is a police station? This is like a county. It got to be like a holding to like county or something. There got to be a lot of jail cells in here. This is huge, I feel. Uh, police with emergency. At 12:54 p.m. on the 8th of November 2021, emergency services get a call. A man named Michael Bryan. Oh, that's a hospital. Riley has been found dead at his home in Nelson, Lancashire. The call came in from Michael's partner. She had reported that Michael had been to the public house the night previously. She had told us that whilst at the pub, Michael had been assaulted, made his way home, got home, and collapsed, and she'd found him in the morning. The major investigations team immediately go to the scene. I arrived in partnership with the crime scene manager, Gemma Cropper, who's experienced in dealing with similar offences previously. One of the first things that we do when we arrive at the scene is to photograph the scene extensively. So that's just to try and capture everything before anything's been moved. So that would involve going into a room and literally a term called quartering. We'd quarter each room and photograph extensively. So that would form our general shots. As the CSI team methodically work their way through the property, DCI Davies evaluates the scene. Going into any crime scene for me, I have a job to do. My objective is to make sure that I can understand and interpret that crime scene in the most effective way possible in order to get justice and understand exactly what's happened. So we're meant to believe he got assaulted at the pub 
and came home, walked around, probably stumbled around and fell. With all that, with all that blood everywhere. And his girlfriend did not find him until the morning. And then what this look is not looking good, bro. It's looking sketchy. Circumstances have occurred. It was quite clear early on there was only one way in and one way out of that address. Equally, when I entered the address, Michael was still present. He was laid prone between the bathroom and the hallway. Straight away, it struck me the injuries that Michael had to his face. He had clear injuries to his legs. Um, and it was quite clear to me that he had been the victim of an assault. There was blood in numerous areas of the premises, albeit some of those didn't look to be fresh. Some of it looked like it potentially been cleaned. Identifying a suspect and finding evidence fast is key. So the golden hour, as investigators call it, when evidential materials are unspoiled and available at the crime scene is crucial. DCI Davies puts a plan into place immediately. So the way we approach this type of investigation is to set clear strategies. We'll look at it from numerous different perspectives. We'll look at it through CCTV to track people's movements. We'll look at witness accounts, digital, forensic, every possible element of an investigation. We will start to look to unlift every stone we possibly can. As soon as officers and first responders arrive, the scene is sealed for forensic recovery. Forensic recovery takes precedence over the search because you can't compromise one over the other. What we then had to do was conclude our forensic search of Michael's home address. In the meantime, a team of detectives collect available CCTV and they begin door-to-door -door inquiries with neighbours and pubs in the area. But for the crime scene manager, Gemma, something doesn't add up. Right, for me too, Gemma. So from the information that was being fed to me initially from one of the other witnesses within the, the scene was that a fight had occurred elsewhere. The scene wasn't presenting in that way. So where the deceased lay, it was just a sort of contact blood and just blood pooling on the floor. However, the further into the property that you got, you could see that there was evidence of airborne blood, which would suggest that there'd been attack site had happened at that scene. It means Michael may have been attacked at home rather than in- See what I'm saying? Like my, my, listen. Crypto, appreciate the top to the gifted to, um, I'm bar none at, at detecting BS. Like that, that didn't even add up. First two seconds, the show didn't add up. In the pub, as suggested initially by his partner, Gemma realizes they need a blood pattern analyst. So that would involve asking a BPA to come to scene and help assist with regards to interpretation of the blood that was throughout the scene, being able to comment on this is insane. A nose ring is crazy for this shape. You know what? My bad, ma'am. Continue. On attack sites, if there'd been any evidence of clean up. Blood pattern analyst Brian Hignett arrives at the murder scene. First thing we saw was the body of Michael. He was laid in the hallway on his back. It's obviously suffered. Go back. He was laid in the hallway on his back so this is a, a bedroom something that's full of junk a bathroom shower kitchen lounge okay and he's in between the kitchen and the bathroom in the little hallway oh he right at the front door wow I it's obviously suffered significant head injuries and leg injuries. The first thing that struck me, despite the fact it sustained such severe head injuries, there was very little blood staining around the walls and the door where he lay. If Gemma and Brian are right, the pub assault story can't be true. The evidence suggests Michael was attacked at home, so detectives suspect they're dealing with murder. And the pub would have CCTV, like, there would be a lot of witnesses. My immediate concern was to confirm or negate the validity of the facts of the assault that had taken place in the public house, or whether or not potentially 
the fact that blood was present had that assault actually taken place within the home address. To start the process, DCI Davies pulls together a large team of detectives to begin door-to-door -door inquiries. Over 50 police start asking neighbours what they know and questioning landlords in local pubs. The neighbours indicated both Michael and his partner had been physically abused for some period of time, unbeknown to the police. Neighbours even named the individual who was allegedly abusing Michael and his partner in an illegal practice called cuckooing. Cuckooing is a form of crime in which vulnerable people are targeted in order to almost take over their own life, take over them financially and take over them physically in terms of everything they do, usually in order to facilitate um, drug usage or dealing of drugs. Cuckooing is a... Cuckooing? Why have I heard that before? A nationwide problem and is often connected to the county lines drug trade. Yeah, it sounded like it has something to do with county lines, but I ain't never heard of cuckoo. Like, I, I might have. I can't remember. One in eight Britons have seen signs of it where they live. In 2021, police identified nearly 900 addresses across the UK where cuckooing was taking place and vulnerable people, including children, we're at threat. Officers learn that both Michael, known as Amos, and his partner are vulnerable and sadly easy targets. It's quite clear that Michael was a loved individual, loved by everybody around him. He was a kind individual, he was a caring individual, and he's an individual that certainly did not deserve to have this happen to him. And all I want to do is to obtain justice. Later that day, the huge team of officers scouring the neighbourhood get a break. Some CCTV from a residential security camera shows Michael with the man neighbours claim was cuckooing him and his partner. Hey, which one was Michael? <laughs> Uh, police with emergency. Lancashire's major investigation team are probing into the potential murder of 48 year old Michael Briley from Nelson, Lancashire. When we get to the scene, we treat it like reconstructing a jigsaw puzzle. Most pieces of the jigsaw are there. Connecting a suspect to the crime is always the most difficult task for detectives. And at the scene, forensic scientist and blood pattern analyst Brian Hignett is looking to do just that. It's our job to go around to find blood patterning, to examine them, to see exactly what they mean, to build a picture, put those pieces back together. What has happened? Where has it happened? Who's done this? Brian's task is not easy. At first glance, the scene is not clear cut. In 30 years, I don't think I can ever recall ever seeing injuries that severe being inflicted by somebody being assaulted. They appeared to be more akin to somebody who's been involved in a road traffic accident. It was clear he couldn't have walked with those injuries. So part of the jigsaw puzzle for us was how has he received those injuries and where has he received those injuries? At this stage, police still aren't sure how or where Michael died exactly. It's a methodical, painstaking process. We systematically work our way through the address. We look at all areas, trying to identify any blood. Is there any blood patterning? Is that blood patterning and telling us anything about of what happened in the events leading up to Michael sustaining his injuries and subsequently losing his life? Exploring the detail of the scene soon reveals something of significance. There was very little blood in the hallway where Michael lay, but when we went into the lounge, we then found significant amounts of blood staining and blood patterning. In particular, there was a single-seater sofa in the lounge. The seat back and the seat base were heavily bloodstained, so much so that some of that blood had actually run down the front of the sofa and had pooled on the floor underneath. That's cool. Behind the sofa and on the wall, there was blood patterning, what we termed impact blood spatter. It's this blood spatter which answered the question of where Michael had been assaulted. He'd been assaulted, sat in that single-seater armchair. This discovery appears to confirm police suspicions. Michael had been brutally murdered in his own home. While sitting in his own little seat. 
Blood just... pattern analysis and intel from door-to-door -door inquiries turn the case into a murder investigation. And Lancashire Police now launch Operation Flaxen. Lancashire Police now launch... Which jersey is this again? Dang, I know it. It's on the tip of my tongue, too, man. Operation Flaxen. DCI Davies goes back to Michael's partner, who's still in shock, and learns she lied about the pub assault in her 999 call. And the reason why is chilling. West Ham, there we Michael's go. Michael's partner summarised it as the suspects had taken over every aspect of their life. Officers now understand Michael and his partner were victims of cuckooing. Michael had actually had all his benefits paid into the person's account and he was charged £40 for the privilege of doing so it would now appear. There'd been a history of assaults that had taken place. Michael had asked people specifically not to report those assaults. We now know that's out of fear. And the individual who Michael and his partner were scared of is evidently on the CCTV that did... I wish I knew Michael and Michael would have just let me know. Ain't no way. See, I don't like bullies and that's my problem. I be trying to mind my business, but when stuff like this be happening, like like an ongoing onslaught of bullying, like that's gonna bother me. Like if it's a one-off incident and I'm in public, I might mind my business. I'm gonna probably mind my business, but if it's like an onslaught, like and you relentless and you this type of guy, like detectives have secured from the streets around the crime scene. He certainly appears to be connected with Michael. And what DCI Davies witnesses is not pleasant. Two key things are highlighted to me there. He's walking with a stick. He's a vulnerable individual in his own right. He's walking approximately 10 to 15 metres behind. He then subsequently strikes Michael to the face and punches him unprompted. They then make their way to the shop. On arrival in that shop, it is very clear and evident that he is abusive further to Michael in that shop. He's being derogatory in the way he speaks to him and he's treating him horrendously. The CCTV what the hell was the shop owner doing? TV confirms the name minded his business because he thought it was a one-off. See? And in public I would think this is a one-off and I'd mind my business. So you know what? But if I knew Michael on a personal level, and I've seen this multiple times, nah, we're not going to. Neighbors witness statements and elevates the man from a person of- Because at that point, you my friend. <laughs> interest to prime suspect. Whilst the CCTV on route to the shop is a clear piece of evidence for us to consider around building the chronology and shows a propensity for violence, and particularly propensity for violence towards Michael, it does not provide evidence that he is responsible for Michael's murder. What we need to do is piece together the evidence that demonstrated that he was responsible for that offence. DCI Day. You gotta think about like the person that's doing this, like, especially in this situation. This guy, like his life is probably terrible. His childhood, his upbringing, everything, everything about this dude is terrible. Davies' major investigation team is now nearly 60 people strong. Not Their Michael, task the other guy. to find physical evidence linking Him. their prime suspect with Michael's murder. It was clear from the CCTV there was quite distinctive clothing that the suspect was wearing. Very distinctive beige jacket. You can see a clear Burnley football shirt and grey joggers. I knew that once he was wearing those clothing earlier that day, there was a strong possibility he was wearing them later that afternoon. They represented significant forensic value for me, and it was important that I recovered those clothing. The more time passes, there's a risk. Al knows a suspect could destroy any contaminated clothing, so he calls the team on the ground to see if the items can be found. He doesn't even look smart enough to do that. When we became aware of the grey joggers, the focus at that point was just to recover them as quickly as possible. It's nearly Ooh, appreciate the dollar. Appreciate you. 
nearly 13 hours since the murder of Michael Briley was reported. Christo and through CCTV, detectives locate an address where they believe the suspect might be hiding. Careful planning goes into any arrest for the safety of the public, for the safety of the officers who are going to carry out the arrest, particularly when you're looking to locate a man who's potentially committed such a savage and brutal attack. They were carefully planned officers, carefully well briefed, and knew exactly what they needed to do when they arrived. At 1.30 a.m. on the 9th of November, officers raid the address. Seven. Mr. Police, open the doors. We're going to put the door in, all right? Can you open up? Open the door or else it's going in. When we arrived and entered the address, he was clearly like a child hiding under the duvet in a manner which he thought we wouldn't identify him. Stand up. Stand up. Put your hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Well, yeah, that's definitely, yeah. At yeah, this point in time, you've lost one suspicion of murder, all right? So you'd have to say a thing. But if you're out of your defence, don't mention when questions central lights on any court. Anything you do say, they mean everything's okay. In fact, we were able to identify. I feel like this is like him. He was doing the little cuckling thing, and he just took it too far. You know what I'm saying? And now he tweaked out. Now he, he burnt up. That another gift to serve from Crypto appreciates you. And arrest the suspect swiftly within that first 12 hours, maximize our forensic opportunities. It, him as a scene could enable us to get forensic evidence for him as an individual. With the cuckoo suspect now in custody, DCI Al Davies and his team have an initial 24 hours to unearth enough evidence to charge him with Michael's murder. Like people be tweaking off their own... <laughs> Like he, he thought he was in control, full control. He thought power tripping. There it is. Brody was power tripping on him. He actually... We do not salute that type of behavior. I'm just... He came across to me. It's not salutable. It's an Bullying is... I've never been one for bullies. I'm talking about all the way since I was a child. Anybody i seen getting bullied, like I was like, nah, brother. <laughs> We're not doing that. To charge him with Michael's murder. Like in school type situation. He came across to me as an individual as arrogant, as cocky, which was completely indicative, I think, of someone who's prepared to cocky with the people. Back at the station, questioning the cuckooing suspect starts in earnest. Yeah, like... Exactly, you gotta be sick in the head to treat somebody like this dude treated Michael. And it's like, people, like, like anybody in general, but women, people at risk, children, elderly people, like, they're like, come on, bro. <laughs> Go with, pick on somebody your own size, man. As part of this investigation, I had to rely upon specialist expert interviewing officers. In this case, we used Detective Constable Dave Richardson, who's an expert in his field. For DC Richardson, there was also a personal connection with the victim. Before joining CID, I worked at Nelson for 15 years, and I was the, the local body. So I used to walk around the streets, and Michael and his partner used to live on the area that I covered. So I would regularly see Michael and I regularly see him walking about with his stick. He would walk round with his Burnley shirt on. He's a big Burnley fan. So what you saying is you going extra hard. You are gonna get to the bottom of this. I was disgusted looking at the CCTV. The footage was quite upsetting in a way because that's the last time Michael's seen alive. So it was all, all very sad. And if you even think dip deeper, like this guy made his life miserable for who knows how long. And then emmed him. So he like passed away in a, like a miserable state. Like he didn't even have a good time going out or doing. We wouldn't even doing what he wanted to be doing or 
You know what I'm saying? Living as peacefully as he could possibly. This dude, oh man. <laughs> It's now 10 to 7 in the yeah, evening. In jail now, they doing something. And there's only six hours left of the initial 24. The pressure is already on. When I met the suspect at first, he was generally quite quiet. People usually are. And he's probably weighing me up a little bit, and I'm weighing him up. And so begins the interview game of cat and mouse. My interview plan in this instance was initially to go through the timeline with him. So. He was arrested in the early hours of the morning. What I needed to cover was all the time from the day before the murder, all the way through the murder, to after the murder, to the point where he was arrested. So where were you? If you don't want to answer, just say no comment. No comment. Okay. You can answer if you want to. Where were you? No comment. Half the time they're advised to go on or comment. So if they go on or comment, I just follow my interview plan. But with the suspect stonewalling DC Richardson. Were you in possession of any weapons? No comment. Were you one of the influence of alcohol? No comment. It looks like it will be a long night. Are you responsible for assaulting? I feel like since he has come comes off as arrogant and one of those type guys. He might get irritated at the line of questioning. He might get irritated and slip up and do some. Michael Briley, also something. known as Amos, causing him injuries leading to his death. No comment. Okay. So just to clarify, at the time. Do you have a legal break or do you want to continue the interview? Uh, yeah, can we have a legal break, please? Lancashire police have tracked down and arrested a person they suspect of the brutal murder of Michael Briley. Frustratingly, he's refusing to cooperate in questioning. No comment. After securing CCTV from neighbouring houses and then wading through hours of footage, investigators find a tantalising clue. The suspect <laughs> appears to be leaving Michael's house at 12.43 on the day of the murder. I think the timing is important there in terms of where the suspect has left. It's only two minutes after the call is made to the ambulance. It placed him immediately in the area prior to the offence. It means the cuckoo suspect was present when Michael's partner called 999. And if he was the killer, she would have seen her partner, Michael, savagely murdered in front of her eyes. It's a chilling thought and helps explain why she claimed his injuries were from the pub assault. It gives some degree of explanation as to next. why a victim of cuckooing may elect not to tell the truth. It's quite evident that fear was apparent when you've got someone you are fearful of is still present within the address. You are unlikely to tell us the correct story. With less than 12 hours left of the 24, the victim's body is taken for post-mortem. It means the forensic team can begin a detailed fingertip search for evidence in the property. We recover any items we consider to be of interest, recover them for future examination, further examination in terms of blood, blood pattern, DNA. At Police HQ, DCI Davies team continue to scour the CCTV to build up a timeline of events. They follow the suspect from the scene. The suspect had left the address. He left now very clearly having changed his clothing. He'd removed the base jacket, the Burnley shirt and the joggers and is now wearing a distinctive pair of orange shorts. This makes recovering the Burnley top and joggers even more essential. Didn't even put no socks on. As he left the address, it was quite clear and obvious he was walking the manager looked like he was potentially uncomfortable. His gait did not look correct and he was walking away from the scene. That is reaffirmed by the fact that we follow the CCTV through to his home address. En route, he then removes that footwear. He left now very clearly having changed his clothing. For some reason, he carries that footwear and then makes his way towards the shop he was at earlier that evening. 
what becomes obvious is that he then discards the footwear he'd previously removed and throws them over a wall. It would appear he's not happy with the location of those trainers because he then proceeds to jump over the wall again in order to, I would say, to move the location. Even though this appears damning, the video evidence is still only circumstantial and wouldn't hold up in court. That was important for me. I needed to know whose footwear that was and whether they'd been using the commission of the offence. The police now start... Not gonna lie, Crypto was a girl. ...to feed what they've learnt into the interview room. We got some really good CCTV in this case, which clearly showed the suspect assaulting Michael in the morning before the murder. It was obvious it was him. Did you slap him? Yeah. So, well, can you show me how your hand was when you slapped him? Like this. Okay. So you should show me the palm in your hand. Yeah. yeah? So palming, slap. Yeah. And then, as we showed him a bit more of the CCTV, he then went back a bit on that. The chap stood on the corner there, is that you? What are you saying? See? He's you can't see the face. So, how, how could that be me? They tracked you. They seen you in the shop wearing the same fit. See, and that's the problem. If you're going to go no comment, you got to go no comment the entire time. Because now you didn't just you didn't just loop yourself. How how could that be me? Now we know you're a liar. You know that's you, and they know that's you, because they got CCT footage everywhere. Just continue on with your no comments. Are you are you saying it might not be you? This is where they get you at. It might not be, yeah, uh, because I was under the influence. Well, I know at that point that he's responsible for that assault. I think, I'll be honest, everybody in the room knew he's responsible because we were all watching the same CCTV. But I carry on with my questions and see if he wants us to give us more information about it. Do you admit that in that CCTV you assault Amos? No comment. So when we showed him the CCTV from inside the shop, it was really clear. It was in colour and we could hear sound as well. Thank you. It's quite incriminating as far as the suspect was concerned, and he, he clearly wasn't happy about looking at it. Right, and he looks perfectly all right. All right, okay. His cheeks bleeding, it's basically nothing. Yeah, it's big tea. See what I'm saying? Now, 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 see? They was just roping you up. <laughs> they was just trying to see if you was going to say something stupid, and you did. That's not me. How could we be certain that's me? Okay, so are you saying that that's possibly not you? I'm, yeah, that ain't, it, that's not me. All right. Next footage, clearly you in a shop. Color HD 4K with sound. <laughs> so tough. he's picked something on his face that's caused it to bleed. That's yeah. right. It's not a result of you punching him in the face. I'm not punched him. Like I said. <clears throat> You're f***ing then. Did you hear that? Well, I can't. No, no comment. Okay. The CCTV, it wasn't good for him because he didn't show him in a good light. So at the moment, I've just asked you about the assault that we believe you've done against Demos. And I've just said no comment. Okay, I'm just telling you what's going on. And I was telling you what I've just said. And the more questions I asked him, the more unhappy he was. So that's that. Anything else? It's 16 hours into the police's statutory 24. And while the suspect is being questioned, the crime scene team makes a crucial discovery. Crypto gifted another the beige tier jacket one sub. Appreciate was found in the hallway. We found in the lounge behind yeah, the yeah. couch a Burnley shirt that was on the CCTV. And in the kitchen, there was a pair of heavily blood-stained jogging bottoms that were also believed to be the clothing on the CCTV. 
it would be marked up as a priority, so it'd be a priori priority submission that we'd sort of rush out the scene. With the clock ticking, DCI Davies makes a decision to fast track all the items for analysis. Like, think about it. Let's really think about it. It's really difficult to get away with an M as an average person. Like, and he had no plan. It's just out of a fit of anger he did that, probably, right? Stupid. That's why I be telling people, man, I know it's hard when your, your frontal lobe is not developed. <laughs> you know, as an adult, your frontal lobe don't get to a development until you like 30, 25, 30. But like you got to you got to get to really like weighing your options in the moment. You know what I'm saying? Like you can't just be doing dumb stuff. And extend holding. I just learned about the frontal lobe stuff yesterday, so I just wanted to implement it today. And the suspect for an extra 12 hours. When we find something like that, it's a sense of achievement, but that's only the first part. We have to examine those in more detail. We can't do that at the scene, that has to be done back at the lab. And it's only when we examine it at the lab, the detail becomes more apparent. But there is still one major challenge for the team. They have no idea what was used as a murder weapon. Despite the extra time to hold the Damn. suspect, their questioning isn't getting anywhere fast. Why do you saw someone? No comment. If we could ask Michael, what would he say about it? You'd have to ask him, look. I was disgusted when he said it. I think you can probably tell in my voice the way I reply. Well, I can't ask him, can I? Because he's dead. Dang. Go. Wait, go back? I think you can probably... Michael, what would he say? No comment. If we could ask Michael, what would... Their questioning isn't right, getting anywhere bad. fast. Why do you saw someone? No comment. If we could ask Michael, he said, "Why have you assaulted Michael?" Michael, what would he say about it? You'd have to ask him. Look, I was disgusted. It's pure negativity. That's top tier diabolical negativity. When he said it, I think you can probably tell in my voice the way I reply. Well, I can't ask him, can I? Because he's dead. I think at that point, I wanted to suspect it, sort of understand it. You know, serious, we're talking about your friend, supposedly, that you've spent however long with is your friend and now he's dead. Everything now relies on getting a positive ID result from the forensics. Knowing there's an individual in custody that's been questioned in relation to the incident, there is pressure. There is pressure to get a result which could further that investigation or could result in releasing that individual from custody. Even with fast-tracking the forensics, it's looking unlikely the results will be back before the new deadline is up. So DCI Davies yeah, yeah. manages to persuade the magistrate's call to extend custody for a further 36 hours. If we reach crossroads of 96 hours, we have to then release an individual who potentially has committed the offence of murder, which could jeopardise public safety. For me as an SIO, I do not want that to occur. Right. The race is on. The team now has a day and a half to gather the proof and officially charge the suspect with Michael's murder. That period is intense. I will not see my family. Many of my investigation team will not see their own families. We will work long, intense hours just because we are so focused upon getting the right result within them time constraints. With 18 hours of the allotted time already. I feel like when you put that type of work, like I know it's not them putting a time frame on them, but like stuff gets rushed, things get mislooked, all the information is not really all of the information. 
And that's why, the, what is it called? The CPD be coming back like, nah, we can't charge it. It's not enough. But in this case, I believe they got it. <laughs> they just waiting on the test. They stalling for test time. Used up. In the test interview results. suite, the suspect wants to further frustrate DC Richardson. Okay, so just to clarify, at the time, do you have a legal break, or do you want to continue the interview? Um, yeah, can we have a legal break? Certainly. Just remind you what we spoke about earlier. Oh, um, no comment. Okay. Can I just ask, are you intending to conduct another interview where you're going to put evidence to him or not? Or tonight? Any time, whether it's tonight or tomorrow. It's highly likely that we have evidence. By the next evening, the suspect has already been interviewed twice. But now the post mortem report has come in. Mm, here we go. The details are shocking. Michael has sustained three separate skull fractures. He had a complex nasal fracture to his nose, he had seven nose. different rib fractures. Seven rib In totality, he had 41 external injury points of impact. He had 23 injuries to his hands, inclusive of defensive injuries. It's quite apparent Michael had fought for his life. That's crazy. And I'm pretty sure, ain't no way Michael did something this bad. Ain't no way Michael frustrated that man this much. He had a lacerate. took out years of aggression. ...to his liver as a result of strikes. The injuries for me are some of the most brutal injuries I have ever come across in my service as a police officer and working with? within major crime. There is 164 impact points on Michael's body. Dang. The nature of the internal injuries are quite harrowing even for me as an SIO. Although the suspect hasn't been cooperating, it's clear a further round of questioning starts to wear him down. It has been what? Like you said, how many days since this event that you're talking about? What does that show you? Show me anything. Isn't, like isn't it that show you the police are doing a, a very excellent job? The suspect in the interview, his body language showed me a few times. There are a few telltale signs when you interview people. There's one, the leg shake, that happens quite a lot, where as soon as you start asking a difficult question, at that point, someone who's been perfectly still, the leg will start to go up and down, and they can't help it, it just happens. So that's a good sign for me, so I think, right, okay, I'm getting somewhere here. The trainers now become the focus of DC Richardson's questions. So, what could be a pair of trainers, like trainers? Do you know anything about those? Could they be your black trainers? No comment. And why are you going into the back garden? For a slash. A slash. Okay. To, to urinate for a wee, is that what you mean? For a... Okay. You climb back over. The garden wall at 26. Yeah. So you're out of, outside for six <laughs> seconds. Yeah. You've had a wee in that six seconds. Mm. So you've been you decide you want to keep them? Or, or do you think, I need to hide them better? No, I don't want to do that. Shame my mind. I mean, I'm not going to hide anything anyway. And while the suspect is denying everything, miles across town, a police search team is hunting. What do you find? Oh man, Brody just said a hot and bingo. He found something. He found a weapon. The jig is up. Lancashire police are in a race against time. They only have 36 hours to find enough evidence to charge their only suspect for the murder of Michael Briley. A search team is hunting for some trainers the suspect discarded whilst caught on CCTV. Oh, the trainers. Just nothing. Bingo. Trainer. There's another Two. trainer. Two trainers. Okay. 
The trainers are swiftly sent for forensic analysis. What I'm talking about, bro. Like, he did a horrible job at doing whatever he was trying to do. In the interview suite, the suspect has no idea his hidden trainers have been recovered and is increasingly unhelpful. Are you dead? Can you reverse it and play it again? Why are, you, why are you spinning things for? No comment for the third time. You're asking me the same question? And that's what I have. Because you, you're not very good at hearing things. What time was the call made? I've no idea. Well, that's not good. You're meant to be a detective. Sometimes in an interview. Going out here and thinking you're going to outsmart them. They got a whole team tasked to getting a job done against you. And you are an average person with below standard IQ level, probably. So it's like, you're beat. <laughs> you're done. It is quite difficult to remain calm, especially when you've got someone who is arguing with you a little bit, trying to wind me up. I might get wound up a little bit, but it's just important that I don't show that, and I just outwardly try and look calm. Should we move on? If you wish, stay up. Despite all the clothing evidence found at the scene, one crucial artifact is still missing. The murder weapon. For me, what stood out was the fact that we were outstanding a weapon. And there was a bed that was a medical bed, but it wasn't in use. I noticed that there were bits that were no longer attached and they were sort of hidden under the bed. Mm. These objects are sent off for investigation in the lab. When we examined the bed post microscopically, that was lovely. there was blood staining. There was blood staining on the inside surfaces. There was a small amount of blood stain on the outside surfaces. There was also body tissue, fatty tissue on the inside. Associated with the fatty tissue was some hair fragments. So that's from his the head. The tissue samples are sent off for DNA testing to confirm if they. Bro was hitting him so hard, he was taking chunks of them. They are Michaels. This is While in the interview room, DC Richardson is breaking down the suspect's defenses. And he gonna get 18 years, an 18 year life sentence. He's been held for over 48 hours at this point. Did you intend to cause him really serious harm? No comment. Did you intend to kill him? No comment. Was that a no or no comment? Comment, no comment. Now, considering at the beginning of the interview, he said the words, no comment. So he knows how to say no comment. But to me, the answer, no, and then a massive gap, comment, clearly means he's, he's answering the question. Did you intend to kill him? No. Comment. Was that a no or a no comment? Comment. No comment. Where was he when you last saw him? No comment. With it getting close to the wire, it will soon be time when police have to either charge or release the suspect and the evidence is stacking up. We found blood matching Michael on the beige jacket, on the Burnley shirt, and on the jogging bottoms. I feel like they got enough. <laughs> okay. We're just drawing this out because it's a show, but like, they got enough. It's a start. Come on, it's a start. That's, what else do you need? You got forensic evidence. The trainers have also tested positive for Michael's blood. Yeah, the done. CCTV demonstrates we can attribute. You got forensic evidence and you got CCTV, CCTV footage. Like, what, what more? You those trainers to him, as that enables us to link those trainers to the commission of the offence. But it still isn't sufficient to convince the Crown Prosecution Service to charge him. What's needed is his DNA profile on the clothing. Which you will find. Three days into custody and questioning becomes intense. He's got some horrific injuries. I know. Of. So how have they been caused? I don't know. I don't know. Have you caused those injuries? I haven't. No. Uh, I've told you the, the truth. 
I got worried. I can't sat, stand the sight of blood. I can't stand it. I, I start fainting. I think throughout the interview, it was obvious that the suspect was only really interested in, in himself. He didn't show any remorse. Who do you think caused those injuries? He could have got injuries from the drug dealers or whatnot because he owes him a lot of money. He blamed the victim partner. Yeah, they've been fighting all night. But look, you can check my hands. Look, look, I've not been punching no one. Yeah, look, hmm? nothing. You check it. In the last interview, he blamed his girlfriend. So he blamed all these people. You know. They ain't got to check nothing, buddy. They already they done did the groundwork for you, man. Let's see you're done. <laughs> interview. Partner himself. With the clock running down, the suspect has been in custody for 80 of the allotted 96 hours. Finally, the proof they all need. And y'all heard me talk about his IQ level earlier. Like, maybe it's just because we watch so much of this stuff. Like, I feel like a a natural thing to do, like, burn your clothes. Like, like is it, I feel like that would be like... self-explanatory like i don't event not saying that i condone it or I, I that's what we see in so other so much movies and tv shows and other forensic documentaries like this like actually arrives i'm telling you the average human being don't even be thinking about that stuff so when they jump out their body and commit an m they mind is some completely somewhere else doing dumb stuff like throwing shoes and bushes in front of CCTV, CCTV foot cameras, like. When we obtained the DNA profile from the blood on this bed frame, that was also found to match Michael. That was the weapon or the implement that had been used to inflict the injuries to his leg and to his head. With the murder weapon confirmed, Brian also has the results from blood splatter analysis. So in an assault, you first of all need to get blood to the surface of the skin. So that could take multiple blows before blood starts to be shed. It's only once the blood has started to flow and is free flowing, and it's only then once subsequent blows are inflicted into that blood, that's when you get Splatter. blood spatter. It's the force of the impact into that wet blood that produces the blood spatter, which will deposit itself on an item of clothing or a weapon. The importance of the airborne blood is that it demonstrates that the suspect was either in close proximity at the time the offence took place, or he is responsible for that offence. The presence of blood spatter on the clothing shows that force has been used against Michael Briley. It's the new... What y'all think he gonna get? He's gonna get life, but how long of a life sentence is we gonna get? I think just because... I said 18 years earlier, but I was capping. I think because of the brutality of it all, I think he's going to get like 27, 27, 28, 26, 20, between 26 and 28. News they've been hoping for, to bring the killer to justice. But the police still need to prove beyond reasonable doubt that the suspect had been wearing the clothing at the time of the killing. 23. We took samples from the cuffs of the grey jacket and we took samples from the cuff of the Burnley shirt. Those DNA results came back and the DNA of the suspect was contained within those profiles. It's the final piece of the puzzle. Finding the suspect's DNA on clothing covered in Michael's splattered blood is incontrovertible proof he is the killer. On the 12th of November, four days after Michael Briley's death, the suspect, Naeem Mustafa, is charged with murder, a result for the major investigation team. The fact that we were able to charge the suspect within the 96 hours available to us demonstrated the extraordinary effort of the officers, the dedication, the commitment each and every one of them uh, committed to this, uh, this investigation. This is actually why we do what How we do. How long did he get? This is what we always strive to achieve. We want to ensure the family and Michael right. Um, the person responsible for this offence is brought to justice. Okay. On the 9th of May 2022, 
Michael Briley's murder trial begins at Preston Crown Court. I think it is awful that an individual would put a family through a trial after the offence they've committed when there was such overwhelming evidence of guilt. You knew he was going to do that. Though. After less than three weeks. So he's going to get the max sentence. You know, when you go to trial, you get the... If you take it to trial, you're getting a top tier sentence. Weeks in court, the jury he might get a 30 piece. We return their verdict. The suspect was found guilty at trial of Michael Briley's murder. He received a mandatory life sentence to serve a minimum of 27 years. Ah, I was right. I told you. 27. I said 27 first, then I said 28, then I said 25, 26, 27 and stuff. I would describe this offence as a cowardly act on vulnerable people. I would too. A disgusting, a despicable act. Something that I would not expect anybody to have to endure. This case will always stay with me. It's a case that I will always remember the time I entered that address to see poor Michael lay out on that floor. The result achieves justice for Michael and his family. But the fact remains that across the UK, more and more vulnerable people are becoming victims of cuckooing. The term cuckooing and the fact that cuckooing occurs is becoming more and more recognised now around the country. Um, it does happen. What I'd be keen to do is make sure, and this is one of the things that family are keen to do, is make sure we can try and prevent other people being victims of cuckooing or something that it leads to, as in this case, the most tragic of outcomes. So if people know of anything, I can only ever appeal to them to come forward, share that information, we will always respond to it. Let me know your comments and your thoughts in the comments, man. TLL, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm gone.